Bo. Hi. I feel shy because my girlfriend's here. Come and say hello, Simone. How do you know? It's there. Go. Okay, you can fuck off now. Go get out of here. Is this gonna be the screenshot, the thumb? Yeah, shot? this is the this is the shot for the thumbnail on the YouTube's. This is we're gonna grab I... everyone in. All oh, right, this is your intro to OnlyFans. Yeah. So I attempted this yesterday, and uh, I fucked it up because I was sitting in a U bend for the whole video, and I can't put that online because what a bad influence I am to be allowing people to see me sitting in such an awkward position. Like, I don't ever sit like that, ever. Apparently I do, a little bit, a lot of the time. Plus, I filmed it horizontally and it was really awkward to put together. So what I'm gonna do is that will be a treat for you patrons. There'll be a, another video uh, of a lady dagger, lady knife that I'll post just on the Patreon, but YouTube, you're getting another one. Boom, there we go. Right, let's start fresh. A4. As always, I have the gray screen on the... Background colors slightly dulled, just so it don't hurt my retinas. And the first layer will be our sketch with the Eagle Hawk pen. So this isn't gonna be symmetrical because it's a knife, obviously, and far too late in my life, I realized that a knife and a dagger are two different things. The dagger's symmetry with a blade either side and a knife has one sharpened edge. So we're still gonna, Bring up on the first layer, I'm gonna bring up, this is gonna be a little guide. I'm gonna bring up, I don't know why I was doing that. I'm gonna bring up the drawing assist, symmetry, get out my eagle hawk. Where is it? Eagle hawk, and then just do that down the middle. So we'll use this as a guide. <clears throat> and we're gonna have everything f flush against the back of that and partly to the front of these lines as well. So we can leave that on a separate layer. So let's turn the opacity on that down, lock that layer, make a new layer. All right, now we can start hashing out some ideas for this lady of the knife. Um, so on a new layer, got the eagle hawk, and yeah, here we go. So yeah, like I said in the last video, this was kind of the design that gave me a little bit of a name at the beginning, I guess, when I first started getting a name. This was the design that kind of, I hate saying it, but got me the following on Instagram because for a long time that was, that seemed to be how you got a name. And you know what, it wasn't even my fucking idea. He has come to me one day at the studio. She was my apprentice at the time. She was like, how about we do a little dagger on the arm and the blade lever be loose. She doesn't have an accent, I don't know why I put it on. And, um, and I was like, yeah man, that sounds shit. Let's not do that. I drew it up put it on a regretted the tattoo, it was terrible. And I posted it online and everyone was like, wow, that's wicked. And from then on, I loved the design. I thought it was such a great idea. So yeah, it wasn't even my idea to begin with. Ah! It got me a name. So thanks for that, Yaz. So anyway, let's, this is the middle of the knife. Let's just go with a classic swirl, or the S swirl that goes through, through the center there. So sometimes it helps turn it right way up so you'd imagine it like a normal knife. And these aren't just like, a, it's not gonna be like a kitchen knife, like a butter knife. You need to think crocodile Dundee knife. Like we're, we're talking like a hunting knife or a shark knife or something like that. Something with a big blade you can fit a face in. 
And um, so yeah, you've got to keep the, I like the handles, I don't, like, I don't know anything about knives, but I like the handles that have the kind of grippy bits for your little fingers and your, your, your finger and that. It's just a bit more dynamic, it just makes it a bit more interesting. So let's have the little bit here where the back of your thumb would rest, curves over, your pinky's gonna go there, your index finger's gonna go up there. And like I said, yeah, it might help to draw it the right way up sometimes, even though you're more than likely gonna be tattooing it upside down because the face, you could do the face at the top, but I feel like it looks, maybe it's just because I've done it a lot, it looks a bit weird having the face on the, with the blade pointing up and the face coming at the top there. Eh. I don't know, but if you draw it, um, if it helps, yeah, draw it right way up, and then you get a better idea, and then you can keep, we'll just flip between the two. I think you can set up Procreate, so this thing is a shortcut to f flip it. I'm not sure it's worth, worth having a look through. Because that does help a lot, especially with drawing faces as well, when, you draw in a face, it's good to flip, like horizontal flip the design, because if it doesn't look right facing the opposite way to what you're drawing, then it won't look right overall. So you're better off drawing, have it starting off with it facing the way you want it to face, and then, you know, flip it now and again, so that it looks good the other way as well. So that it'll look naturally the right way. Uh, it'll look right. Mm. It will look natural the right way as well. Or something like that anyway. So yeah, I'm gonna add this, maybe make it a bit interesting and have like a bit of a, I don't know, a little nipple on the end there or some shit. Or sometimes, yeah, a little like hoop, you can hang something off. You know, maybe if it was getting adventurous, you could have fucking, tassel hang on up there or whatever. We'll just have the hoop for now. That's kind of cool. The empty hoop. Let's make that smaller so we're not taken right up to the edge of the page. Okay. Right. So there's that. Now let's work out the size of the blade. So yeah. Have a little groove in there. There's little details like that. Just make it work good little details like a little groove a little cut out there because there's nothing there's not going to be anything there there's going to be a bit of hair and some some dark shade in there so yeah you might as well just put in a bit of something saying just there i'm gonna make the blade come out a little bit further than the guideline just for the face because you've got to think about it the brow will be there Nose, lips, chin. So yeah, if you get mark out something rough, and then just think about where it's going. So you could bring the blade, you can come down to like there, and then that kind of that's got a nice, nice look to it, a nice shape. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. Sweet. All right. All right. So now let's do the loose hilt. Is it called a hilt? The leather straps on the handle. It's the little details that make these things look good. So don't just have them all flush with the handle. Like have if it's loose, it would have come down in a spiral and it would have like given way a bit. Some can flick back behind this bit, like go behind there and some in front. Like this one I'll probably keep in front, and this back one I'll keep behind. 
But if it's loose, then all of them will be loose, not just the ones that are falling off. So make sure they're all just a little bit, a little bit loose like that. Mad. Even to this day, I get sent rip-offs of these these knives. You know, I don't even mind. I've got loads of sketches online of this, and you know, I'd rather be copied than be ignored. So go ahead. But for the sake of my customers, just make up your own ones. Let them have their tattoos that they paid for. Let them walk around and let them show off theirs. If you like these, then draw your own ones up. They're not hard to draw. I can't claim knives. You can draw whatever the fuck you want to draw. Cool. So there we go. That's rough. Right, now for the face. Now, for time's sake of the video, I'm going to use a picture of a face. And I'm going to put it in... And we're going to do a rough trace of the shape of a face because it can get a bit confusing trying to draw a face out. It's all it's good if you're drawing for a toe for the next day and you want it to look uh, like original. Then yeah, spend your time drawing out a face from scratch. I'm just going to get a picture and we'll trace a rough trace around that. Take the picture away and then we can add the details and make it our own that way and just speed things up a little bit. Cool, so I found this face, which is pretty handy because it pretty much fits exactly the <laughs> rough sketch I did just a second ago. So that's nice. Uh, so yeah, put that down and lock that, like, opacity down, lock the layer. Just use any face you can find. It doesn't really matter because you're only going to use the rough. you just got to go through a few that will fit in a knife that works. So now we're just... We can change up the shape of the original knife a little bit just to make way for the face a bit more. So I'm gonna take a knife, I'm gonna widen it just a little bit. Uh, so put that in free form, just bring that out just a tad. That's cool. Bring that there, bring the face forward a little bit. So unlock that, bring it forward just a little bit so you get more of the eye in. Um, yeah, I'm cool with that. Right, so let's rough out. Let's lock both of these. I'll put the opacity down on that a bit. Now we'll rough out the face. So just rough, because you're going to make this your own in a minute. I'll show you the ways that I do mine to give them my own my own little touch, make them my own. I'm sure you'll find your own ways to make them yours your own as well. But this is just to get a nice structure so it looks natural without, um, if you're not too confident drawing faces uh, just yet and you're just following along, then this is a good way to help learn that. Um, there's a million tutorials on YouTube about drawing faces. So I recommend going to do them as well as doing this, this is using a face as part of another design, so it's not a whole, you know, need to sit there and go mad trying to learn to draw faces just for this. So this one's not really got an eye open, which is fine. You just want to hint at them bits like that. So these little flares here, this is what will make it, this is what I like to add, so this is what makes it my own, I guess. I'll just mark off that bit, the shadows under the nose. There'll be this flick here that I usually add. Doesn't have to make loads of sense, just, just to be fluent. Is fluent the right word? Not fluent. Um, you know, flow nice. <sighs> cool. 
cool. Okay, now you can take away the face and we can start working at it. So let's turn that off. Right. So let's put that down. And now we have, so lock that as well. And now we have a face to work with. All right. Obviously, I've done these a lot before, so they're a bit easier for me to draw. If you're following along, just pause, take a minute. You know, you don't need to rush this. I'm, like I said, I've drawn a lot of these, so I'm quite fast at drawing these. If you want to, if you're just following along and I'm going a bit fast, just pause it for a minute, man. Put some jams on and sketch away. You don't need to rush into it because I'm rushing into it. I've got, I'm following a, a time here. I'm trying to get this video in so it's not too long. All right, let's draw these lines on now. So these are some neater lines. I've had some people ask me, what the fuck do these mean? And I don't have a clue. They just look like they should mean something. I, I said it before, like it's good to, for a tattoo to look like it has a backstory. Like, I mean, the backstory could be anything. Like, what is the knife? Maybe, maybe the face is the memory of a, um, a woman who was in distress and used the knife to, I don't know, hurt someone that hurt her. And the, that's the reflection of her memory. Maybe she fucking hates onions. So she got her face etched into a knife. So whenever she cut through an onion, it felt like her face was cutting them open. <laughs> Some bullshit. I'm gonna mark off the shadows as well, just because. So this bit would have this down here like that. So this is all gonna be black under here. We're gonna get them brow, uh, not brows, them. Uh, lashes looking mighty fresh. And as we've got this little part of the nose here, we can have some flicking out from here like this. So it hints at another eye. But you know, I'm not gonna do that in this because it's a perfect side on. If it was a bit more of a, a three quarter profile, then I'd add the lashes coming out the other side. And uh, that would look nice. I'm gonna line the bottom of the brow because I like the brow to fade into the black that's here. This hat comes to like this weird point. Yeah. And you're kind of just making it up as you go now, just whatever works. Let's, yeah. Yeah, so this will have a bit more of a shadow underneath as well. Here. Yeah. Things like this, the way that nose is shaded, are just, they're not really things I've picked up from toes, they're things I've picked up from photographs of people. So, it doesn't always make sense, but it works ish. Yeah. Um, It's, very, it's a very neo-traditional way of thinking, is to kind of block the block the tattoo off into segments and work work it that way. 
So as as if like the the nose is called in a shadow here and there's light coming like down that way. Yeah. Yeah, so it's picking up bits of light. Like the nose is called in a shadow there. This side of the nose will be in the shadow. Quite like harsh, but it wouldn't be this harsh obviously. It's just more of a, a more of a creative freedom. Whatever the word is. Now for separation, I'd leave. I'll do this at the end. I'll show you that we use a lot of white. I use a lot of white to separate parts of the face from like the edges of the blade. So you just got a bit more wiggle room to bring black right up to the edges and not feel like you're over oversaturating the design. Shadow under the lips and coming from behind here as well. Oh yeah, let me explain my glove, the reason I'm wearing a glove today. I've learned that I was having some troubles with my iPad because the lines were kept skipping. So there would be like, I'd be drawing and then there'd be dots in the lines and it was really annoying. And uh, someone said it's usually because like, you get like a greasy screen. Well, obviously when you're touching it a lot, that can happen. And um, I said, if you give the screen, if the screen's clean, then the grease won't cause that to happen. So I started wearing, I thought, oh, I'll give it a clean and I'll wear a glove. Cause these kind of clean it as you go. Only like three quid on Amazon. And um, and it works. I haven't when I use this, I don't get a jumpy, jumpy lines in my in my design, which can be flipping annoying, especially when I'm doing like full on illustrations. I'll actually show you what I'm working on in a second. Let me get some of this shading done. Under the eye now. Oh, you could use the picture you got as a reference if you unlock it. Turn the opacity back up. Take it away. Oh, take it over. And then you've got the face. There is a little bit of reference as well. Should have done that at the beginning. But yeah, always use reference. Always. And like you can see here, look. Like, shadows make the shape you could you could trace around the line of something and it still look fucking weird so if you start putting the shadows in properly it starts shaping it a bit better obviously she's got a bit different lighting on her face but not too far off. So I won't use the full shadows that she's got going on here. No, 
her actually goes in a little bit so I'm going to use the liquefier bring that it's just the shade in it oh no wrong layer cut that out cut and paste See, this is why you lock layers, man. Right. Now, liquefier. I'm going to bring that in there, just a little bit there. I might actually bring a chin up just a tad. Looks natural on her, but not in my drawing. That's better. Bring that nose down a little bit there. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. See that little bit there, just at the corner of the lip, just changes it. Changes everything. It's crazy. Alright, so. You now the edge of the blade, I always add, I like to add a little bit. So you've got, you have like this one bit here. So I might add white into and then take another bit off at the point bring it up around the back of the face just to add a bit more dynamic so it's not just black to the edge and then this bit will all be sitting behind So it's black there so let's just make this black because it's dark even if it's open slightly it's dark enough that you can't see anything really we're gonna put brows uh, the lashes coming out on top she's got makeup on as well so we can black that right up to the top there don't be afraid to put black in black is good black is your friend you're gonna shade into it anyway see this bit underneath as well you can leave a little bit out add some white just in that room there if you were to tattoo this and then this bit that obviously isn't in the picture this is like her eyelid bag <laughs> the eye, eye thing underneath the underneath of her eye that'll just run down like that just a bit of patterning so it's a bit more illustrative than realistic and the shading will come right from the edge like this Try and make your shadows like not flat, like make them like this. A face isn't flat, it's curves, right? So it'll be dark to light a lot of the time, in a lot of areas. I will bamboo chalk over the top of this. Yeah, like things like that, like this shade in here I'm doing right now, that's not normal. You wouldn't get that in a normal face, but it's dynamic. It adds to the flavour. Alright, so this eye here is shadow mostly and then the eyelid at the top is light. 
So I shall do that too, because I like the look of that. That looks cool. And then her actual eyelid, because her eyes half closed, you'll get to see more of her eyelid, and that's mostly skin. But again, it's on a curve, so, and our light's coming from a different place to what it is in the photograph. And yeah, the brow. So if it was, if this was like a normal, like a face that wasn't stuck in a blade, I'd add some hairs to the brow, give it a bit more pep. But it is in a knife, so we're going to make it solid black and fade off into the black that's in front of the eye, like so. And then there will be some shadow under the brow ridge too. Don't want to make it look like she's got a unibrow. So give it some definition on the edge there. Separate the brow from the shadow. Nice separative, a separating line on the front. Perfect, right, bring this top into the night. Actually, no, let's do that right to there. That's cool. All right, and then there'll be black from up here. So remember you've got the blade bit that can come up in front of this and then you can have a bit of black there and kind of fade the design over the tip of that more dynamic dynamic shadows and shadows never line shadows up separate them one higher than the other Enough the magic. Let's fuck this up with some fucking messy lines. So this is be the hair. So I'm just gonna have fucking go crazy with this. And I don't like to put the hair going like two bigger clusters over. Like so, don't have a hair like this going meet in a line because it makes it look like you've marked out a shadow or something. Have it go over the detail on the on the areas. No, all different directions, all different strands of hair, different thicknesses. When I come to tattoo is usually when I decide what thicknesses to do the hair strands. But I mean, like, yeah, sketching it all out first is never a bad thing. You know, even have some, you know, coming from around and going over. I've done that a lot before. Just, just adds to it, makes it look nice. Cool. So that's that. Now. Let's do the rest of the blade. I want that to be straight. It wasn't, but I want it to be, so I'm going to make it. show you some artworks I've been working on at the end of this video some other artworks right so this bit's gonna go in front of the handle and the other big fallen part will go behind so don't make the one that goes in front don't make it too thick 
you don't want to take away too much of the detail. But it always looks nice when you manage to follow a shadow on a surface through to the other side fluently, like it would be in real life. I say, keep saying fluently, that's not the right word. Like, it, is it the right word? I don't fucking know. It's one thing about hate. I hate about doing these videos. Is I usually got music, got the TV on while I'm drawing. And I'm in silence. Because if I play music, I can't play music on the video because the music's in the background here, and I can't get rid of it. It's annoying. But I'm going to put some music over this for you guys to listen to. So like calm and instrumental. Yeah. I remember they're all loose. All of them are loose. to make them fall as if like a spiral. Make them fall down. Think of gravity. Look at this top part. They would be wrapped going following the top part. So make them fall following the way they would have been wrapped. Obviously the metal would be harsher shadows. We want it to have this kind of like chrome, like a polished silver look, because that's the way the, the white's gonna look best. So just lots of harsh, leave lots of gaps for white. Not necessarily, not so important whilst you're doing the sketch because you can just draw over it. But when you're tattering, you've got to make sure you leave them gaps. Because it'll be a fucking arsehole trying to get the white in um, after if you haven't left any gaps. Just like that. We'll do some soft shadows too. So on the wrap, um, make sure the shadows correspond with how the leather straps are falling. So that one's got a shadow underneath it there. Shadows would come from, the, on this one they'll come from the back and ones that are set behind would have a darker shadow. So this one was out in front of that one a bit. And that big one, this one here, is going to have a bigger shadow going across there. Because remember the blade curves over like this, so the light coming down, it would go around to the back, sort of, maybe.
gonna get out for the block shading I'll get out the uh, bamboo chalk now and uh, we can block shade some big chunks so this is all the detail shading that's gonna have a bigger one uh, probably not that big but whatever it looks cool it doesn't have to be realistic it just has to look nice not all harsh shadows that I do in my designs are realistic all right so bamboo chalk now for this I'm gonna lock that layer but not gonna turn the opacity down and I'm just gonna mark out some areas like in here mark out this bit so all of the leather straps areas that aren't the big ones falling off mark them out get your bamboo chalk and then just brush over one side So it's kind of catching it more towards the front, but you know, like that. And then the same again for the face. And this just ties the sketching together. Like, yes, yeah, so if you're doing a, if this is for a design, you could kind of leave it there and you'd be, uh, that'd be fine. Wouldn't be a problem. No, I don't want to do that. I just want the face. Um, because you could follow this this is more than enough to follow and you could make stuff up as you go but if you're trying to do flash then do all these steps obviously make it neater than this because this is like I said for the sake of the video um, but this will help sell the design a bit better Because it will make it look more finished. People get an idea of what they they get. The kind of the closer the closer the design is to how the finished product will look, the more likely they're going to take that. And the more likely they're going to take that and go, oh, that's going to look cool. If it's like a sketch, they haven't really got a full idea of how it's going to look finalized. So making it look finalized will give someone more reason to go ahead and take that as a um, as a tattoo so yeah I'm gonna leave the sketch there now I'm gonna add some white so lock that layer as well now the white obviously just do over the top and because it's on a gray we've got more of a gray background this should show up even better than when I used to when I was doing them before without the gray so it adds a couple of little bits like in there a little bit there over the top we add something there Add something on the edge of the nose. Any areas that you might think highlight, add some on the lip. There, like that. In here. That looks cool. And then mostly, most of it will be on the shine of the blade. Like you where you expect to see the shine of the blade. Remember, the light's coming this way. So you're catching it at the top there and then drifting off down the sides. Like that. I like doing a lot of these stop starts. You do like a hard edge, then fade it off. So it looks like it makes it look like the surface the surface is curved, but the oh, I can't explain it. There we go. I'm not going to line it, you can line it yourself, whatever way you usually make a stencil for your tattoos, then do that, but I'm happy with that, for, what was that, 45 minutes, that ain't too bad, but yeah, you, I, I, I'd neaten that up a lot first if I put that as flash online, but yeah, I'm happy with where that is, so fuck yeah, we've done a fucking knife, woo, there we go, um, please, send me or tag me in your versions of this knife i'd love to see them to see what you come up with 
going off of this tutorial and I'll get another one up soon and like I said the patron you will get the shitty one I did yesterday as a bonus it's still a finished product I just look like I'm sitting in a U-Bend probably didn't sit too much better today I forgot to show you the artwork I was working on this is the first one this is a t-shirt design I did for the Moth and Flame Halloween flash day uh, will only be it's, the t-shirts ordered and they'll only be available at the uh, the flash day um, so make sure if you're local come by and pick up one of them I've also been working on this big piece it's about I don't know if you ever saw the pelican I did it's about the same size massive and uh, yeah I just got to be working at that I've also got a nice Reaper that I'll try and show you on the screen that I've been working on too I like having a lot of things going on at once because I get bored of the same thing if I stay on it. So if I have more than a few things, I can flick between and I stay interested. But anyway, thanks. If you could uh, be so kind as to join the Patreon, I'll put exclusive content up on there and uh, it always helps support me a little bit more. Or you could buy a coffee or buy something from the store, like and subscribe and all that fucking bullshit. Thank you, love you and good evening.